In this video, I would like to talk about multiple choice questions and their implications. If you are here for tricks on how to answer them, uh, you are in the wrong place, like uh, <laughs> really, really wrong place. So when you are presented with the choice of A, B, C, D, and one of them is correct, the logical thing to do is to choose one, even if you don't know which one is correct, right? Uh, there's one in four chance you could still get the mark. Sometimes you could do better if you could prove one answer is wrong, probably it becomes a one in three. If you could eliminate two answers, you have a 50% chance of guessing it right. But for real life situations, this is not the case. For example, is your computer male or female? There's only two answers, so if you guess, you get 50% chance of being right, right? Well, well, I'm sure you agree there is something that's just wrong with this question. The question assumed computers have genders. If you make a wrong assumption, things like this happens. Just, yeah, you know this is wrong, no big deal, you might think. But I picked this example only because it's easy to understand. You don't know what you know is wrong. Because there's the anthropic principle. If you know it's wrong, it's not being a thing that you don't know it's wrong. And this sucks. Almost every time you ask a question about real world, you have to build on something that could be wrong. You might argue surely questions like, is one apple plus one apple equals two apples? Couldn't be wrong. It's about mass. Well, uh, here's what I meant. Now, this is one apple. And now I have two apples. Now it's one again. What about now? Uh, now you probably agree it's no longer one apple. When did it stop being one? You see, the analogy of number is only useful when you are doing math with them, not very useful when you are eating them. The truth is this simplicity. Back to asking questions. When we think we are imperfect, we can't always be correct, we might be only thinking about making a statement or giving an answer. And we forgot that's a problem for asking questions as well our wrongness will inevitably extend to the questions we ask, and therefore the answers we receive. Of course, it makes sense to you to make those assumptions when you ask a question, but you can only make assumptions based on what you know. This is why I think we should be humble not when just answering questions, but when asking them as well. Like, don't just think, what is the right answer, but also, what is the right question? Humble is not a virtue or something. I think it's a necessity and I can do it for totally selfish reasons. Because people can get too focused in answering the question given. After all, that's what we are all used to when we see a question, uh, when we are being educated. A, B, C, D, you choose one. And sometimes we just forgot to question the question. If you express your lack of confidence in the way you ask the question, it might remind others... Uh, sorry. If you express your lack of confidence in the way you ask a question, it might remind others of that. That's not the only thing I would like to remind you, though. I'd also like to remind you to not forget to be awesome. Thanks for watching.